हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल ओरेकल डीबी ऑनलाइन ट्रेडिंग सो टुडे वी विल बी लुकिंग एट ओरेकल डेटाबेस 19C आर्किटेक्चर एंड विल बी गोइंग थ्रू इंटर आर्किटेक्चर डायग्राम एंड एवरी डिफरेंट कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ द ओरेकल 19C डेटाबेस सो बिफोर वी बिगिन आई विल बी रिक्वेस्टिंग यू टू सब्सक्राइब माय यूट्यूब चैनल ओरेकल डीबी ऑनलाइन ट्रेडिंग सो दैट यू कैन गेट ऑल द नॉलेज रिलेटेड टू ओरेकल डेटाबेस in in our previous videos we have seen how to perform certain operations related to database such as uh, installation of rag database or uh, you can perform the database upgradation from 12c database or there are so many videos like uh, uh, create uh, installing a oem uh, cloud control and even though you can from data guard operations related uh, steps are there and uh, there are so many things are there you can even though uh, do the patching related videos you can watch so before we begin i will be requesting you to subscribe so you can keep on getting all these update and if you want a personal training you can contact me on these numbers so let's begin for the day uh, this is our today's agenda that oracle database 19c architecture and uh, we'll go through entire architecture diagram and everything so this is our initial architectural diagram for oracle database server so basically suppose you are a, and there is a, one application client and this is our database server okay so we have to understand what is this database server is all about in terms of uh, what all the different component associated with the database how it interact with the users so suppose you have one application and it wants to connect with the database server then there has to be a listener the intermediator which connects the uh, client application or the process with server process on the server process there are certain different operation happens and uh, different components are associated we need to understand that part in the depth okay so <clears throat> this is my a uh, listener service which uh, which interact with, between client and the server okay <clears throat> this is my database instance these are the database files and the file systems so <clears throat> so we'll go through entire uh, architectural diagram one by one and we'll try to understand what is this so uh, an oracle database consists of at least uh, one database instance and one uh, database so uh, whenever we talk about instance that means it is a memory and the process so there will be a uh, different processes along with the memory component that creates the one instance okay so in oracle database is all about one instance or multiple instances and along with that it has a database whenever we talk about database that means it is having certain data files system files okay so a database consists of physical files called the data files that can be a non container database or the multi tenant database okay uh, so <clears throat> either it could be a container database or it could be a multi container database and oracle database also uses several database file systems during the its operations so there could be a multiple uh operations uh, database file system operation will happen okay <clears throat> next thing is a single instance database architecture consists of one database instance along with one database file systems so one to one relationship exists between the database and the database instances like this one this is my one instance and this one is a uh, my one database files so one to one relation is there And then if there is a multi, uh, multiple single instances data where it can also install on the same server machines there are <clears throat> separate database instances for each database and this configuration is useful different version of the database so on the single server you can keep multiple database versions like 11g 12c 19c so you can keep that kind of architecture or, or as well and the next part you can see oracle re real application cluster uh, real application cluster database architecture consists of multiple instances that runs separately on different machines so this is your uh, server one uh, similarly there will be another server 
so these are interacting with uh, these uh, instances and interacting with each other that kind of scenario is called the real application cluster okay the cluster of the server machines appear as a single server to the end user so the end user whoever is interacting with the database server in case of rack like there will be a multiple database servers in multiple instances and the end user did, uh, did not come to know which database server i am getting connected to it will just uh, throw the request and with the help of listener services it will be um, user will be getting connected to either one of the one of the uh, database instances and that kind of scenario is like uh, end user will never come to know which uh, database server is connecting and it will act as a single point of uh, contact for the database users okay the cluster for uh, cluster of a server machines appears to be a single server to the end user and an end user and application on the other end this configuration is designed for the high availability scalability high end performance so there could be a like uh, situations or the, there there could be a possibility of lots of loads on the database servers to avoid those circumstances and in case of high availability scalability these are the uh, requirement that uh, every users has so to fulfill the, those requirements we can use a real application cluster that is called oracle rack database okay next one is the listener is a database server process so basically this is the listener will be always a database server component and it is a one of the process okay that is used for uh, it receives the client request establish the connection uh, to the database instances and then hand over the client connection to the server process the listener can run locally on the database server or run remotely and typical oracle rack environment are run remotely so whenever uh, so these listener services could run on either of the if it is a single instance database then it will be running on the same server and it in case of rack it could be running on a, on any of the remote database servers that is what it is saying so moving further we will be looking at database instance first so uh, we'll be looking at this component from our architecture diagram we are now focusing only on the database instance okay so this is my database instance diagram or you can say components so basically a database server has database instance and within a database instance it is having a system global area it is a memory component then program global area that is called pga and this one is sga okay these are the <clears throat> these are the main component memory components okay so uh, so client application users will be communicating with server processes and there will be a multiple background processes okay and uh, your data files will be there so database instance uh, contains a set of database background processes and the memory structures so the main memory structures are the system global area that we have seen here and the program uh, that is called the program global area that is pga so the background processes operate on the stored data data files in the database and it uses the memory structure to do the work so there will be a background processes that will be interacting with your database file systems with the help of your memory components that is the logic behind the database instance so a database instance exists only in memory once you started your database then these processes and the memory component started and once you will be bringing down your database system your instance will be gone so it is it is basically a database entity that will reside in your memory structure and 
the next part is the Oracle database also create a server processes to handle the connection to the database on behalf of the client program. So uh, if a program, uh, any end user will be anyone who will be invoking a connection request. So there will be a server processes associated with your client processes. Okay. For example, parsing of or running of the SQL statements, retrieving and returning the results to the client program. These types of the server processes are also referred to as a foreground processes. Okay. Next is system global area. Now we are uh, getting deeper into uh, mem uh, memory components of the database. That is, uh, first one is the system global area. System global area is contains different subcomponents such as shared pool, flashback buffer, redo log buffer, large pool. Then we have in memory area, database buffer cache, then shared, uh, shared IO pool, stream pool, Java pool, fixed HGA, and some of the optional extension that database smart slash cache. So system global area is very important component of the uh, Oracle database uh, architecture. And it's a memory related components. So a system global area is a memory area that contains, that contains the data and control the information for one Oracle database instances, instance and all the servers and the background processes share the SGA. So the logic behind system global area is sharing the same set of data with multiple user requests. So a system global area is a memory contains, uh, uh, memory that contains data and the control information for one Oracle database instances. And all the server and the background process share the SGA. When you start the database instance, the amount of memory allocated for the SGA is displayed. So I will be showing you the one of the examples uh, in my lab. So this is my database up and running. And if you see, I uh, just started my database and there is some um, system global area that is allocated. So using a parameter, uh, using this uh, command called show parameter SGA, you can verify your current SGA size. So this is my SGA target of 952. SGA maximum size is 952. Okay, so there has to be a memory allocation for your instance. This is my single instance database. And you can see there is some something called SGA. And similarly, you can verify your PGA also in the database. So parameter PGA. These are the memory related components that, that has to be defined. So the, you can see a PG aggregate limit has been 2 GB and PG aggregate target is 317 MB. So likewise, there has to be a SGA component and the PGA component. So these two components are making a, my memory component for a database. And along with that, there will be a multiple processes we will be looking one by one. For the timing, we will be looking at system global area. What is the different components of the system global area? First one is a shared pool. So shared pool's uh, logic is what it is. It catches the various construct uh, construct that that can be uh, shared among the user. For example, a shared pool stores the past SQL. So there will be a, uh, like a situation where a single SQL will be getting executed multiple times. So in that case, what it does is it, it stores the um, that those SQLs, PL SQL codes and the system parameters or the data dictionary information inside the shared pool. So it does it it doesn't have to uh, like uh, perform the same operation again and again. If the uh, if the queries structure, I mean, uh, if the queries the details are the same, or you can say. Uh, queries uh, identical which was run previously so those information will be kept inside the shared pool okay and it doesn't have to perform the parsing again and again so what is uh, database parsing is basically a, uh, a parsing is a multiple 
uh, you can say uh, of database operations that happens whenever a user executes uh, any query. So it start with a syntactical semantic checks. Like uh, suppose you have run one query, select star from uh, uh, select star from a particular table. So first it will uh, check whether the, your syntax is correct or uh, your uh, like uh, objects that you have or you are referring to in the queries existing in database, whether you have access or privileges to access those uh, uh, objects in, in the database. So this comes under the your database uh, query parsing. So there are there are phases like uh, two phases of uh, parsing. Either it could be like a, a soft parsing or the hard parsing. If the query is uh, getting rephased, I mean it was executed previously and it is available in the shared pool. That then those condition is called the soft parse. And if it is not available in the shared pool, then it has to again uh, perform those uh, multiple operation like. Uh, some operations like checking the syntax, semantic checks. And uh, so those parsing phases will happen again and again. So that is called the hard parsing. So a shared pool uh, stores the various uh, SQL or the PLSQL codes, uh, system parameters or the data dictionary information, which was parsed previously, okay? The shared pool is involved in almost every operation that occurs in the database. For example, if the user executes a SQL statement, then Oracle database accesses the shared pool. This is the first component that we have seen in the SEA. Next one is a flashback buffer. So is is an optional, this is an optional component, okay? Flashback buffer. This is an optional component. And uh, when the flashback database is enabled, so, Basically, your flashbacks logic is like uh, uh, if you have enabled your flashback in your database, that means you can go back to a previous restore points. Okay, so you have uh, you, you have a choice of uh, flashbacking to your database or a table uh, to uh, your previous existing restore points. So those information will be kept inside the flashback buffer initial initial level. Whatever the changes are happening in the database, if your flashback is enabled, so those changes will be first go into your buffer area of flashback. That is called the uh, flashback buffer. Okay, and later it will be uh, it will be kept inside your flashback area FRA. Okay, so flashback buffer is an optional component of the SGA when flashback database is enabled. The background process called record writer process, RBWR, is started. So RBWR periodically copies and modifies a block from the buffer cache to the flashback buffer and subsequently tries flashback database data from the flashback buffer to the flashback database logs which are circ uh, circularly reused, okay? So this is the last component that we have discussed, flashback buffer. Next, we will be uh, discussing about database buffer cache. So database buffer cache is very important component. Whatever the operation that we are performing in the database, that will be related to some data, so those data will be kept inside the database buffer cache. So in memory area that stores and copies of a data blocks read from the data files. So if you remember, we have seen uh, uh, along with the memory component, there will be a, a data files related to a database. So whenever you are fetching some uh, request, from the database, so those uh, data will be fetched from the data file. Okay, so in order to serve those data file requests, uh, there has to be a memory component where your data blocks will be restored. Uh, sorry, blocks will be kept. So this this is the one of the area that database buffer cache. Okay, you are making a request from the data files for initial level. It has to be stored somewhere in the memory. So 
uh, there has to be a memory component which is called the database buffer cache okay uh, buffer is a main memory address in which the buffer manager temporarily caches a current or the recently used data blocks all the users concurrently connected to the database instances share access to the buffer cache this is the one part okay next moving ahead we will looking at uh, different other components the database smart flash cache this is an optional memory extension of the database buffer cache for the database running on solaris or the linux systems it provides a label to cache of a database block it can improve the response time and overall throughput for the both read extensive online transaction that is oldp workload as well as ad hoc queries and the bulk uh, data modification in the data warehouse environment a database smart flash cache resides on one or more flash disk so basically a logic of behind the smart flash cache is um, uh, faster access of your data so this is an additional component provided in your database in memory and if you have enabled these features and it is supported basically on linux and solar systems so if uh, this database smart flash cache has been enabled uh, you can like perform the faster operations by using this component okay next one is a redo log buffer what it does it is a redo log buffer so uh, whatever the changes happening happening in the database there has to be a memory component which uh, write those changes okay so all the redo log buffer will be a memory component where all the changes will be getting written into so in it is a uh, circular buffer in the sga that holds information about the changes made to the database this information is stored in the redo entries redo entries contains the information necessary to re construct or redo the changes that are made in the database by the data manipulation language so there will be a uh, dml operation happening in the database or the ddl ha operation happening or the internal operations are getting happened so in order to do, uh, write those changes and there has to be a memory component called the read log buffer in the memory area that will be uh, keeping in the buffer and the later it will write those entry in the database uh, read log files okay so this is also mandatory process uh, mandatory memory components shared pool database buffer cache read log buffers okay now we'll be looking at a large pool so, so this part we are discussing here what is large pool a large pool is an optional memory area that is intended for the memory allocations that are larger than the appropriate for the shared pool so if your shared pool is not able to hold certain certain your request so we can use additionally at large pool so large pool can provide the large memory allocation for the user global area that is called the uga for the shared server architecture so we'll, there are basically a two architectures uh, like shared server or your dedicated server so in case of shared server what happens is like uh, you are uh, basically managing your memory stuck memory uh, uh, memory area uh, with the help of uh, shared with the help of shared uh, server informations and uh, in case of dedicated there will be a one to one mapping between a user uh, client request and your database so we'll be looking the, those parts in the upcoming video uh, i mean within the same video we'll be looking that part also so nothing to worry about too much so basically idea is the large pool can provide the large memory allocation for uh, UGA for the shared server and the Oracle exe interfaces that is used where the transaction interacts with the multiple databases. Message buffer used in the parallel execution for the statements. So these are the scenarios in which uh, your large pool comes into the picture. So 
match message buffer used in the parallel execution of the statements buffer for the recovery area then you have the iu slaves and the deferred inserts so these are the scenario where your large pool comes into the picture so if you want to perform some rma related uh, operations so your large pool uh, memory components are used and uh, if you are using the deferred inserts so this is also useful for large pool components okay next part is in memory area what do you mean by in memory area it is an optional component that enables objects such as table partitions and other types to be stored in the memory in the new format known as a columnar format and this format enables the scans joints aggregate uh, to perform much faster than the traditional uh, on disk format thus providing the fast reporting and the dml performance for both oltp and the data warehouse environment this feature is particularly used for analytics analytic application that operate on the few columns returning many rows rather than for the oltp which operates on a few rows returning many columns okay so in memory area is additional uh, memory components that enables uh, that enables uh, like uh, faster operations okay next one is a memo memo optimization mys pool so in is an optional components and that can provide uh, high performance and scalability for the key uh, based queues queries so mem optimized pool contains two parts that is called the mem optimized buffer area and the hash index so fast lookup using hash index structures are mem optimized pool providing fast access uh, to the blocks for giving the uh, uh, giving uh, given to the table and enabled uh, for mem optimized for read permanently pinned in the buffer cache to avoid the disk io so it will basically avoid the disk io and basically this is a performance component that you can additionally enable okay next one is the shared io pool that is called the secure files uh, so it is used for a large io operations so we'll again go back to our, uh, this memory component area this is we are discussing about shared io pool okay and then we have three more uh, three more component related to sga so first uh, we'll look at this one shared io pool so what it does is used for the large io operations on the secure file um, secure file large object that is lobbies uh, so secure files is a lob storage parameter that allows the duplication encryption and the compression so if you are using a secure file operations so you can consider increasing or decreasing this uh, memory component called shared io pool okay next one is the stream pool is used basically oracle streams uh, that is uh, d supported in 19c onwards but uh, it was previously used uh, in uh, d uh, then there is a data pump com, uh, data pump that is used for uh, from the back, certain backup operations golden gate for uh, golden gate integrate captures apply processes okay the stream pool stores uh, buffered queue messages and it provides the memory for the oracle stream captures processes and apply the processes unless you specify configure it the size of the stream pool starts at zero okay so whenever you are configuring any golden gate uh, architecture and uh, if you are performing some data pump operation you should uh, always look for a stream pool area uh, of your memory components uh, that should be uh, should be set to a proper appropriate value so that you don't face any challenges during your backup operations or golden gate configuration okay so the pool size grows dynamically as needed when the oracle stream is used okay next point is the java pool it is used for basically a session specific java code on the data in the java virtual machines for java pool memory is used in different ways and depending on the mode in which oracle database is running next one is a fixed sga uh, is an uh, internal housekeeping area 
containing um, general information about the state of the database and the database instances and information communicated between the processes. So these are the main memory component that we have discussed so far. Next, I uh, will go with uh, program global area, that is PGA. And uh, let's look at uh, what are the different uh, components related to PGA. Basically, a program global area is related with a user global area called the UGA, then SQL work area that is used for sorting area. Then we have a session memory which stores the session variables, OLAP pool, then private SQL area. Okay, so this is my client processes point to cursor in the PGA that is called the private SQL area. Okay, and then we have a stack space has area, bitmap more area. So client process connect to the server process which is again connected with the PGA is created for the server process. So, and this is the logic. So if you have a client process, which is uh, requesting and connected to your server process, so it will be associated with a program global area called the PGA. So whenever a user is uh, getting connected to the database server, it will have certain amount of memory allocated in terms of uh, server processes and that uh, that is program global area and uh, th there are various sub components related to and basically this is a memory component so whenever a user getting connected to uh, whether it is an active state or inactive state it will be holding a four m minimum four to six mb of uh, memory area and that comes under the pga okay so program global area is non-shared memory region that contains the data and the control information exclusively for use by the server and the background processes. Oracle database create a server process to handle connections of the database on behalf of the client program. The dedicated server environment one PGA gets created for each server and the background process that is started. And each PG consists of a stack space and has area, bitmap, merge area, user global area, that component we have already discussed. A PGA is deallocated when an associated server process or the background process is using is terminated. So suppose user is terminating this session, so this uh, PGA will be also deallocated. Okay, next is a, in um, basically a PGA is non-shareable memory components. Uh, so previously we have seen SGA that is your shared component. Uh, basically that will be used for uh, performing your uh, database query operations. And this is your uh, program global area is non-shared. And if you're like a dedicated architecture, so this memory, um, these are the one-to-one -one mapping happens like a user processes. Uh, um, for every user, client processes, there will be a server processes that is uh, having a program global area which stores certain uh, values for like session uh, memory or you can say SQL areas uh, for performing certain sort of operations. Okay. So in shared server uh, environment, there will be a multiple client request. Uh, sorry, client share users share this server process. Okay, the UGA is moved into the large pool, leaving the PGA with only stack space. So, in case of shared server, what happens is uh, UGA component. And this will be moved to a shared pool components. Okay, and uh, uh, so PGA will only having uh, hash area, bitmap, merge area, or the stack space. In dedicated server, the PGA consists of the following components that is called the SQL area, the sorting area, the session memory, and uh, just a minute. So, so guys, we are discussing on. Um, uh, memory area components inside that we are discussing uh, PGA. Uh, so whenever a dedicated server sessions like in the PGA 
uh, happens then pga components will become uh, consisting of the following sub component called sql area work area the sort area is used for functional sorting operations like uh, whenever user is firing order by or the group by commands so those are sorting operation will happen with the help of sql area sql work area sorry in the session memory and uh, the user session data store area is allocated for a session variable such as logon information and other information is required by the database session then the olap uh, pool manages olap data pages which requires the data blocks and then we have a private sql area this area is hold the information about filed sql a statements and other session specific information for processing and when the server process execute sql pl sql codes so those information are kept inside the private sql areas okay next we will be looking at uh, stack space area what it does is stack space is memory uh, allocated to hold the session variable and uh, arrays perform the hiring operation then hash area this is the area is used to perform the hash of hash join uh, hash join of uh, tables and then we have a bitmap merge area that is this area is used to merge the data retrieved from the scans or the multiple bitmap uh, indexes so like a, for every pga for a dedicated connection we have these uh, sub components okay so i think uh, it is uh, so far you are very good clear with the user uh, global area like uh, we have sql area session memory private area and has area stack space bitmap merge area okay so this is done and next one we need to look at the background processes okay so background so far we have seen only the memory component now we will be looking at the different processes okay so background processes what it says is that there are mandatory background processes like lpmon pman log writer sorry listener registration lreg then smon database writer ckpd for checkpoint operations mmon mmm nl then reco lgw these are the memory component or you can say mandatory processes okay Mm, mandatory processes that is required by every database instance if you kill one of these processes like pmon pman lgwr smon so then your database will crash okay this is the logic then there is this optional processes like archival processes uh, job key processes fvda S smco rbwr then there are certain slave processes called dn dnnn snnn so these are the slave processes so these are the different background processes mandatory process optional processes slave process okay so a uh, background process are the part of the database instances instance and perform the maintenance task required to operate the database and maximize the performance for multiple users each background process is perform a unique task but work with other processes so they are working um, with the, within a communication like pmon is uh, uh, monitoring all the processes ckpd is uh, informing the database writer to write uh, operation from the memory to your actual data files so they are uh, working uh, like uh, with interaction with, between each other okay the oracle database create background process automatically when you start your database instances okay before suppose uh, your database is down so there will be a no processes so once you start uh, run the command start up your database so it will uh, uh, these processes get you know invoked okay basically they, this process will be started okay and uh, when you start your database instance a mandatory background process automatically starts and you can start optional background processes later as required so mandatory background processes are present in all typical database configuration and these processes run by the default read write database instance started with a minimal configured initialization parameter files okay a, a read so parameter file is part of your database 
architecture and uh, it holds various uh, like uh, components details like uh, what is what will be my sgs size what will be my pgs size what where will be my control file will be residing so all those information are kept inside a parameter file that is called the initial uh, initial parameter file or init file or if it is a binary formatted then it will be a su file okay uh, so i hope you are understanding what are the different components of any oracle drag data on a, any oracle database architectures okay so there will be a memory component background processes and certain data files so now we are discussing uh, mandatory and background processes so there is pmon uh, process manager process pman a listener registration process called le l r e g system monitor process smon database writer checkpoints ckpt management management uh, manageability monitor process mon manageability monitor light processes mmm nl and then we have recover processes where echo log writer that is lgws so most optional background processes are specific to the task and the features so some of the common optional processes include the archiver processes job queue process coordinators recovery writer rbwr and the flash for flashback database archiver process fb da then we have the space management coordinator space smco okay and slave processes are the background processes that perform the work on behalf of the other process for example the dispatcher processes so basically a dispatcher and the shared server processes will come into the picture whenever we are using the shared server architectures not the dedicated architecture so dedicated is one to one mapping in case of shared server we are additionally uh, uh, i mean using the memory component uh, uh, efficiently and to make your memory utilization uh, a little lower and uh, with the help of shared server architectures uh, uh, you will be like uh, giving the uh, you will be allocating your memory component to the users uh, in a, a queue format okay so this is the one thing that we have uh, seen background processes so far okay now we'll again go back to our shared pool uh, memory component area that is a shared pool which has uh, different sub components library cache and let me go back to our original uh, memory uh, architectures first then you will come to know which uh, section we are discussing currently okay so once this is my system global area that is called the sga so we are discussing the shared pool only okay and uh, now we'll go back to our original page this is my shared pool area so shared pool uh, understanding of shared pool is very important because all the operation in your database you are performing will be associated with a shared pool so this is my library cache reserve pool data dictionary cache so whatever the data dictionary information are getting cached into your uh, memory component will be stored in the data dictionary cache a reserve pool will be there and then a library cache that is used for shared sql or the pl sql area then server result cache that is used for uh, storing the sql query result cache pl sql function result cache so this will store your query results and there is uh, some other components like uh, enqueues latches as ash buffers okay bitmap tables so a shared pool is a component of the system global area that is responsible for catching the various types of the programs and for example a shared pool stores part sql or pl sql codes system parameters and the data dictionary information a shared pool is involved in the almost every operation that uh, that occurs in the database and for example a user is executing a sql statement and then oracle database accesses the shared pool so this is the logic and then shared pool is divided into several sub components such as library cache 
result pool, data dictionary cache, and uh, library cache is basically a shared pool memory structure, and that stores executable PL and uh, SQL, SQL, SQL ports. And this cache contains the shared SQL, PL, SQL area and controls the structures. So I uh, will not go much uh, deeper inside it. And uh, I hope uh, you will be understanding what these components are doing. Like uh, this will be storing uh, uh, your uh, library cache it will basically is used for memory. Uh, this is a memory component that stores like uh, P SQL, PSQL codes while executing those queries. And the reserve pool is a memory area that uh, that in in shared pool that Oracle database can use allocate large contiguous uh, chunks of memory chunks of memory and the database allocate the memory from the shared pool in chunks and chunking allows large objects or 5k to be allocated into the cache uh, without requiring a single contiguous area okay and next one is data dictionary cache stores information about database objects such as uh, that is a dictionary data and this catch is also known as row catch because it holds uh, data as a row instead of a buffer. Then we have a server result server catch in the memory pool uh, within a shared pool and the, it holds the result sets. Okay. There are some other components uh, which includes NQ latches, information lifecycle management, bitmap tables, active session history buffers, and the other minor memory structures. NQs and the shared memory structure logs are serialized access to uh, database resources, and they can be associated with a session transaction, for example, control file transaction, or the data file, and then instance recovery or the media recovery, and so far. Okay. So this is the shared pool component that we have seen. Now is a large pool. So, so basically we are looking sub components of the SGA. So first we have seen the shared pool. Now we are looking at large pool. Okay. So guys, I hope you people are enjoying the video. And if you are new to my YouTube channels, I will be requesting you to subscribe my YouTube channel so that you can keep on getting all the updates. And if you have any question regarding this tutorial uh, about uh, Oracle, uh, uh, sorry, the architecture of uh, Oracle database, uh, you can mention uh, those doubts in the comment box. I will definitely try to help you out. And uh, basically, the, today's session is completely uh, theoretical sessions, and uh, uh, we'll be discussing about uh, architecture part of the database. And uh, you will be learning um, most of the theoretical part. So it will be a little boring also and interesting also. And if you're new to the Oracle uh, database, so understanding of Oracle architecture is. Uh, very important and uh, you should be learning, uh, you should be knowing the architecture is very beneficial, okay? So guys, we are looking at large pool now and uh, within a large pool, so you can see this is my system global area and uh, within that uh, we have a large pool which has a free memory, IO buffer area, user global area, deferred pool, uh, deferred insert pool, request queue, response queue, so basically a dedicated server connection will happen like uh, within client application is uh, dedicatedly can, uh, communicating with your uh, large pool area. And if it is a shared server architecture, then uh, client will send the request to a dispatcher and the dispatcher will place a request in the request queue. And uh, from there we have a pickup request from the shared server processes. And uh, with the help of shared uh, server processes, our uh, data uh, will be retrieved and the place in the response queue. Uh, data will be retrieved and then it will be placed in the response queue. Okay. And uh, at the end, uh, it will send a response to the dispatcher and uh, return the response to the client. This is the shared server component. So basically, a uh, seven step process will happen in case of uh, shared server architecture. And if it is a dedicated connection, then one to one mapping will happen with your memory components. Okay. 
So with the help of large pool, uh, you will be performing a shared server operations. And the large pool is an optional memory uh, area that database administrator can configure to provide a large allocation of for the memory, uh, such as a user global area, session information, or for the shared server and the Oracle X interfaces will be used with the help of this um, components and IO buffer area and uh, IO server processes manage uh, manages buffer use buffer used in the parallel qu query operations. And then uh, we have a recovery manager IO slaves. So those, if it if, if it is a shared server architectures, whatever we have discussed previously about our um, memory components. Uh, such as a user global area. So those operation will be helped from the large pool uh, area of your memory components. So shared server architecture will be served with the help of large pool components. Okay, uh, this is the one thing that we have seen. And next will, uh, so, so uh, client application. So in case of shared server architecture, what happens? Uh, so these are uh, requests like, uh, how, what is the workflow that we can look at this point junction? So a client application send a request to the database instance and that request is received by the dispatcher that we have seen over here. So it is received by the dispatcher sent to the request queue. Then response queue will pick up, uh, sorry, request queue will, um, with the help of shared processes, a uh, particular a request will be picked up and then the data retrieval will happen and it places the response in the response queue and response queue will send the uh, response to the dispatcher and the, finally it will go back to your application users. So guys, uh, I hope uh, you are able to understand the large pool component so far and now we'll move ahead with uh, database buffer cache that is a very important component of memory memory uh, system global area memory component okay so database buffer cache basically it whole uh, it has various sub components such as uh, um, default keep recycle non default buffer pools and the flash buffer area such as uh, default flash lru chain keep flash lru chains okay so we have a list LRU uh, list will be there. Okay, LRU list is there. Checkpoint queue is also here. So a database smart cache with a buffer cache extension that, that is an optional component that we can use. Okay, so a database buffer cache also called the bu buffer cache in memory area in the system global area that stores the copy of a data block read from the data file. Okay. A buffer is a database block chunk of memory. Each buffer has an address called the database buffer address, okay, DB. So, so whenever a user is placing a particular request for a data like select star from particular table, so those table data blocks will be first kept in the memory area called the um, database buffer cache. And there are various sub components like a keep, recycle, non-default areas or list LRU. So within a, um, your buffer cache, this uh, sub components will be available. With the help of these components, we'll be able to fetch those data blocks, okay? So going further, we'll be looking at uh, what are these components. So all users concurrently connected to the database instances shares and accesses the buffer cache. The goal of the buffer cache is to optimize the physical IO. Okay, so physical to reduce the physical IO for like from accessing the data from your existing data files. Uh, in um, from the that point of view, uh, you can say it will be. Um, its main objective of a buffer cache is to avoid the physical IO rather than uh, doing the physical IO, it has to be accessed from the memory area that is uh, your SGA that will be more faster in comparison with your actual physical IO, okay? And the first time an Oracle database use process requires a particular piece of data, it searches from the data in the database buffer cache. If it is not available, then it will go back to your, uh, mm, yeah, it will go back to the, your 
data file. So uh, if a process finds a da uh, data already in the cache and it can read the data directly from the memory, then it is called cache hit. And if it cannot hit, uh, it cannot find the data in the cache, then a cache miss will happen, okay? And it must um, copy the data from block from the data file into the disk buffer cache and ascend, uh, accessing the data. So accessing the data through uh, cache hit is faster than accessing the data through the cache image, okay? So if you are able to uh, get the um, requested block in the memory, that is called the cache hit, and if it is missed, then a cache image, okay? Uh, buffer in the cache are managed by the complex algorithm for complex a combination of a list recently used that is called the LRU list. So whatever the blocks are coming, it has to be... Uh, like uh, go out of your memory component otherwise your SGA will be uh, uh, getting utilized so <clears throat> so in order to manage those uh, there has to be algorithm that is uh, managing our um, database buffer cache so there is something called a LRU algorithm using the list recently used uh, um, algorithm theory it um, performs the list and touches the count and so LRU helps to ensure the most recently used block tend to stay in the memory. So whatever the uh, most recent blocks will be kept inside the LRU queue. And if it is an, uh, kept is not getting used, then those data blocks will be kept out of the memory. Okay. So using this LRU algorithm, it will keep on um, performing the uh, data block accessibility. So the database buffer cache consists of the following that is called the default pool, key pool, recycle pool, a non-default buffer pool on the database smart flash cache. So these are the, some of the other mm -hmm. subcomponents like the default pool uh, is a location where the blocks are normally cached. Out. So whatever the uh, data block that is fetched from the data files will be by default kept in the default pool until unless we'll um, make it, um, we'll keep in other pools like key pools or the recycle pools. So um, the default block size is 8 KB and unless uh, you manually configure it to separate uh, pool size like uh, 16 KB or um, 32 KB or 4 KB or 2 KB, okay? So um, this is a default pool area and uh, it's a uh, default size is 8 KB. And then next one is the key pool. It, it, it is intended for the blocks that are accessed frequently, but uh, which aged out from the default pool because of the lack of the spaces or the per, this purpose. Mm, the purpose of the uh, keep buffer pool is to retain the specified object in the memory, thus avoiding the IO operation. Suppose you are, there is one table and uh, you want the stable data suit to be uh, 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 available throughout your entire operations, like uh, it should be available every time. So you don't have to like uh, um, wait for um, logical IO or physical IO to happen. So we can directly keep inside the key pool. So this is what the logic is. And then there is something called recycle pool. Recycle pool is basically is intended for the block that are <clears throat> used infrequently and recycle pool prevents the specific specified objects from consuming the unnecessary space in the cache, okay? So suppose there is a, some tables which is uh, consuming unnecessary spaces in the, so we can, we can keep those inside the recycle pool. So next one is a non-default buffer pools are uh, um, table spaces that is used for non-standard block size of 2 KB, 4 KB, 16 KB and 32 KB. So each non-default block side has its own pool and the oracle database manages the block in this uh, pool in the same way that it manages in the default pool okay next one is the database uh, smart flash cache so let's let's uh, you use a uh, flash devices uh, to increase the effective size of the buffer cache uh, without adding more main memory and flash cache can improve database performance by having a database cache frequently accesses the data stored in the flash memory. So again, it is a performance benefit that you can get. 
and we have already seen the list lru algorithm so basically its logic is to maintain your data block from hot end to the cold end and it uses a list recently used algorithm so whatever the blocks that is uh, used uh, list recently used so uh, using the uh, hot and cold and we can manage the blocks in the um, buffer cache and the cold buffer is a buffer that uh, that cannot be uh, that has been not been used recently and the hot buffer is frequently you access and that has so conceptually there is only one lru and but for a data concurrency the database actually uses a several lrus then checkpoint queues flash buffer areas so i'll be providing this uh, document if you require and uh, you can go through these documents these are very good documents so so we have understood what is the database buffer cache and uh, what are the certain operations associated with it, what are the subcomponents like uh, mm, default pool, key pool, recycle pool, and how these uh, data blocks are managed inside your database buffer cache. Okay, so move further and we'll see what is the next thing. So next is the database data files. So database data file basically consists of a root container database uh, root container data files such as system sysox temporary users undo and then says data with the seeding pdbs and the regular pdbs so all these data files will be um, seeded and the same data files will be reflected in other uh, pdbs regular files and these are my application containers so database data files are basically uh, database is a set of uh, physical files so this will be our physical file so far we have discussed the memory component that is a logical uh, entity and whenever your instance gets started those, those uh, memory component and the processes will exist but your physical data file will reside uh, throughout your life cycle of your database like uh, like um, until and unless you don't uh, remove these files they will be available in your your servers or your storage okay so this is a physical entity of your database uh, architectures and so database is a set of physical database file that stores user data and the metadata the metadata consists of structural configuration control file uh, control information about the database server you can redesign you can design your database to be used in multi container container database and non container database okay so uh, CDB and PDB are the two um, multi-tenant uh, architecture uh, components. So basically, we should be understanding um, what is my actual database files are. So basically, we have uh, certain uh, data files related to database. Why is called the system um, data files that will uh, stores only uh, system specific uh, details such as uh, sys object or uh, sys or uh, system related objects so it has a data dictionary information so and then we have a sysox area that stores my um, <clears throat> sysox related information such as um, um, ASIS related information awr related information those are uh, permanent data will be kept in the sysox table spaces and there is a temporary table space that is used for performing the temporary operation in your database and then there will be a user table space uh, user specific table space whatever the application changes are happening they are kept inside the user table spaces then there we have undo table space basically this is used for the read consistency purpose so in case of any um, like uh, uh, instance uh, failure or any issues happen so uh, an undo table space will have uh, those risk read consistent values so by referring the undo table space we can um, perform the read consistent operations okay so these are the main components and if you, you are using a multi-tenant database architecture so we we have this root containers and uh, it has sub um, pdbs like um, seed pdbs and regular pdbs and uh, 
this is uh, what uh, it has mentioned uh, again you can refer my documents if you want i will be providing you the documents for uh, your reference okay and uh, <clears throat> next we'll look at the um, database system files okay so that is very important so in this part of what we'll be looking at uh, what are the different uh, sub components such as control files it, it is required files for the startup of your database if it is not available your database your startup will fail okay so control files which is a uh, your heart of your database it has every information um, well, right from the um, uh, starting with your uh, database file locations uh, read log file locations whatever the changes are there so checkpoint numbers everything are stored in the control files then we have a parameter file which is like again um, all the um, database specific uh, parameters are defined in this uh, parameter files like uh, your control file location uh, sga memory component related information and other information then we have online read log files uh, again that is uh, required for uh, storing the um, buffered data of your uh, read logs that is uh, from read, uh, that is written from your memory component uh, called uh, read log buffers into the read log files actual files okay then we have a uh, automatic diagnostic repository that will be storing your uh, um, what do you say traces and uh, alert logs so these are the mandatory uh, some of the um, file system that is required whenever you are performing any um, whenever you are creating or making your database so there is a backup files is also there where you can keep your backups and then we have archive read log files and uh, password file is also storing the critical password while it is also a new component additional component you can it is optional these are the some of the optional um you can say components are related to database database uh, system files and uh, then blockchain tracking file uh, and uh, we have flash flashback logs okay so we'll <coughs> go through one by one uh, So the first part is control file. So control file is required for uh, file that is uh, stores the metadata about the data file, online read log files, for example, their names, status, and the, this information is required by the database instance to open the database. And the control file contains the meta, uh, metadata um, that must be accessible when the database is not open. And it is highly recommended that uh, you make several copies of the control file in your database servers, okay? So your control file should be a multi, uh, um, multiple control file has to be there and it should be a multiplex. And then the parameter file is required. Uh, uh, required file defines how the database instance is configured when it is startup, okay? So it has a, uh, it can be either initialization parameter file or called P file or SV that is a server parameter file. Then we have online read log file. These uh, these required files are stored uh, stores changes to be uh, to the database as they occur and are used for the data recovery. Okay. And next part is a uh, automatic uh, diagnostic uh, repository. And the ADR is basically a file-based repository for database diagnostics, such as traces or the dumps, alert logs, health monitor, and more. Okay, and it has a unified directory structure across the multiple instances and multiple uh, products. The database, Oracle Auto, Auto, uh, Automatic Storage Management, ASIM, Listener, or the Oracle Clusterware, the other Oracle products uh, components stores all the diagnostic data in the ADR. And each instance of uh, each product stores the diagnostic data underneath its own home directory within the ADR. Okay. Uh, this is one thing. Then we have the backup files. The, these are the optional files used for the database recovery and uh, you typically restore the backup file when a media failure or any a user error has damaged or deleted the original files. Then we have the archive read log files. So these optional files contains the ongoing history of the data change that are generated 
and uh, generated by the database instances using these files backup uh, of a database you can recover the lost data file and this uh, this is that is archive logs enabled recovery area uh, recovery of the restored data file okay next one is your password file all the system sys db sys operational sys backup sys uh, dg and sys k km sys r uh, sys rack and sys asm roles are connected remotely to the database instance and perform the administrative task using the password files then we have a valid uh, valid is large uh, scalable deployment where applications uh, use password credential to connect to the database and it is possible to store these credential in the client side oracle valid or in the oracle valid is a secure software container that is used for uh, store that is used to store authentication and signing credential and password valid okay then we have blockchain tracking file uh, which is basically used to hmm, which is used for the incremental backups and it keeps track of all the changes within a database blocks and it is stored in the blockchain tracking file then we have flashback logs basically a flashback uh, database is similar to the conventional point in time recovery that is um, and it, it's back and it enables you to uh, return to the database uh, to its state at the time in the recent past and the flashback database uses its own logging mechanism of creating flashback logs and storing them in the past recovery area okay so the control file online read log file archive read log files are can be multiplex and this can be more identical copies and separate locations and the control file parameter file online read log files are required for the database startup so these are the mandatory files that is required okay and so this is one thing that we have seen so far then the application container will not go much deeper into it and then we have this uh, automatic diagnostic repository okay now, now the automatic diagnostic uh, repository that we, we are seeing and in this uh, there are multiple sub uh, you can say sub components are there so we have background trace files foreground trace files jump files health monitor incident pa packages incident dumps and the alert logs okay so uh, background traces are basically uh, each of the database background processes can write uh, to its associated trace files when the process detects an internal error the process dumps the information about the error in these trace files so as a dba you should be knowing about all these trace locations and uh, uh, regularly uh, based upon your issues you should be looking at these um, different traces and uh, and then we have the alert log also on the database incident dumps incident packages so all these informations are there okay so next part is a backup file basically backup file could be a data bump um, data pump uh, export backup and then create logical for backup and it dumps the file uh, into the certain backup locations and we have a recovery manager utility that is also used to and using the some like we can create a tape backup or we can create a recovery appliance backup or we can create a um, backup on the clouds and we have um, uh, other options of like uh, creating a physical backup to the disk uh, like we can create a image backup or image copies and like uh, bringing down your database and uh, like uh, performing the copy operation at your os level and uh, we have backup sheet we can create a backup pieces using our main utility you can create a <clears throat> backup on the file system so these are the backup files which comes under the database architectures that we need, we should be knowing and uh, creating a physical a physical backups to the disk and operating system utility okay so overall this is the backup file is there so physical backup are copies of a physical database you can make a physical backup with a recovery manager or arm and utility on, on the operating system utility and then we have a logical backup contains the table stored procedure logical data and uh, using the export um, data pump export to store the binary files and logical backups can be supplemental physical backup okay uh, so this is one thing then database backup created by armands are stored as an image copy or the backup sets an image copy is a bit to bit on disk duplicate of a data file control file and uh, or the archive read logs and you can create image copies or the physical copies using these options okay and uh, 
and then we have a backup set for uh, appropriately so these are the different components that we are looking and uh, this comes in under into the backup files uh, component okay and uh, so uh, we'll uh, discuss more about these parts uh, when we discuss our backup and recovery tutorials in upcoming days so keep a track on my videos and uh, maybe you will be getting more about these backup strategies and how to take these backups and all those stuffs just for the time being uh, to understand the architecture point of view you should be knowing that uh, there are various uh, backups that we can take and uh, this is the one thing then we have a process now we'll go deeper into the um, process details and uh, we'll looking at all these processes what its uh, functionalities and um, how they works okay so we'll be discussing uh, more about the mandate processes such as uh, pmon smon and other processes so first process is uh, pmon which is called the process monitor processes okay so uh, pmon is basically here it scans uh, all other processes related to database so a process monitor is a background process that we always scans all the processes to find any uh, any um, that have died abnormally pmon is responsible for coordinating cleaning of the uh, cleanup performed by the cleanup main process clmn and cleanup slave process clnn and uh, pmon runs as an operating system process and uh, not as a thread and in addition to the database instance pmon also runs automatic uh, storage uh, management instances and uh, oracle asm proxies instances so this is one thing that uh, pmon does and uh, next one is a process uh, manager process uh, basically a process manager process it is uh, it monitors spawns and stops dispatches shared server connection broker and the and job key process rest uh, your background process so this is a um, main function of a process manager process and uh, this is called pmam pman and the process manager is a background process which uh, does the following things like uh, monitoring spawns and stop the following dispatcher and the shared server um, in case of a shared server architectures uh, we can use this uh, these are the processes that are used and uh, Armand run as an operating system processes and not as a thread. And in addition to the database instance, PMAN also run as Oracle um, um, Oracle automatic storage ma management instances, that is ASM and uh, Oracle ASM proxy instances. Okay, so this is one process. Next one is the listener registration process so that is called LREG, a listener registration process that notifies the listener and the listener registration process is a background process that notifies the listener about the instances, services, the handles, and the endpoints. Uh, listener registration process can run as a thread to monitor um, thread or the operating system process in database. To the, in addition to the database instances, it also runs on the ASM instances for like real application instances also. Okay. So we should be knowing the basic uh, uses of this process. That is a uh, background process that notifies the listener about the instance uh, services, handles, and endpoint. Okay. So this is uh, one process that we have seen. And next one is a system monitor process, very important process. And uh, SMON system monitor process, which is which creates and manages temporary segments, maintains the undo segments, cleanups, the data dictionary, and the maintains the system change number, whatever the system change number SCN are changing that is maintained by the SMON process. So this is the basic uh, main functionality of the SMON process. And um, again, the same thing has been mentioned over here. And, um, and this is also run for um, real application database and it is associated with your um, ASM instance also, okay. Next one is a database writer process. So, so this is my database buffer cache from the memory component that we have discussed earlier. And we have a database writer process. Uh, there could be a, like um, <clears throat> from a zero to nine and uh, A to Z and uh, V36 to 96 database writer process that writes uh, into the either database uh, smart flash cache or in your 
a data file system okay it reads from the memory and write into the data files so this is the functionality of the database writer process okay so if, um, the database writer process initialization parameters specify the number of database write process there are can be a one to hundred database uh, write processes and the name of the first 35 processes are um, given in the naming convention of the db w0 to dbw9 and the dbw uh, a to dbw z z and uh, the name of 37 to 100 is given by the vw36 to vw99 and the database selects an appropriate default setting uh, for a database write process and adjust a specific um, specified setting based upon the number of cpus and the process groups okay um, this is a very important process and the database writers are scattered through the disk and these um, this, the writers tend to slower and subsequently to perform the database log writer. So database writer perform the multi-block write when possible to improve the efficiency. Okay. So this is another important parameter. Next one is a CKPT process. So basically CKPT um, process the checkpoint. So our database is basically based upon the checkpoint events. So whenever um so basically um i will show you the flow uh, in this diagram so we have a checkpoint process which triggers the database writer um to read the data from the database buffer cache and then update the data into your data files and uh, it also updates the metadata inside your control files mm, okay so this is a workflow of your checkpoint process. We can see it in more de detail and it's represented with the CKPT and it is a background process that is specified the specific time start a checkpoint request uh, by managing the database writer to begin uh, writing the dirty buffer, whatever the uh, blocks which is uh, already in your uh, in your buffer cache and it has been modified by certain users also those uh, blocks are called the dirty buffer uh, blocks and uh, dirty buffer and um, so ckpt is the event is the process that is responsible for in, uh, notifying the database writer to write those dirty buffer into your data files and uh, on the completion of individual checkpoint request ckpd updates the data file header and the control file to record the most recent checkpoint so checkpoint will be basically updated inside your control file as well as your data file so this is very important uh, thing and uh, ckpd um, checks every three seconds to see um, whether the amount of memory exceeds the value of PG aggregate limit initialization and um, if so, it takes necessary action based upon those uh, checks. Okay, CKPD can uh, run as a thread or the operating system process. And in addition to the database pro instances, CKPD also run as Oracle database storage uh, management instance also. Okay, so this is uh, one thing. Next one is a manageability mo monitor process M1 and the management monitor light process that is MMNL. Okay, so basically uh, um, this is required for managing your AWR report uh, snapshots and your um, ASH report snapshots. So um, we'll be discussing more about AWR and ASH in our future videos. Basically uh, whenever your um, database gets in your database, so whenever there is a certain changes are happening or anything is uh, specific to your statistics of your database. So using the V-Dollar views uh, in the memory, we can um, get those details from the SGA. So you can see, we can get the active session history from using the V-Dollar active session history views and the V-Dollar session, V-Dollar session weight. So these are the, like your, um, memory specific uh, data so once your uh, um, database instance is down so this data will be uh, no longer exist or after a certain period of time this data will not be available in your database so these statistics should be written to somewhere in the database file system in order to um, write those file those uh, details in your file system there are certain processes that is running in the background that should that are responsible for writing those changes in your um, system or uh, soft stable spaces risk okay so it gathers and filters the statistics and uh, create a snapshot every six, 60 60 minutes or 
for by default or we can modify this uh, snapshot time time retention periods and uh, um, then we have a uh, fixed ACS buffer and um, it uh, using the MMNL management ability monitor light process uh, flash it flashes the ASS buffer into DBA hist active uh, says history. Okay, so there are multiple snapshots get created and uh, using the AWR uh, repository uh, within a SysOx table space, uh, these data are stored. Okay, so these two, um, um, these two are the main processes that is responsible for doing this task. Okay, and this is the thing that is mentioned over here. Next one is a recoverer process. So recovery process, basically a recovery process, background process um, that is um, slows the distribution transaction um, that resolves the distributed transaction that is pending because of some network issues or a, um, failure of a disturbed database. And uh, reco can be um, uh, run as a thread or the operating system process, okay? so. Uh, another important process, a uh, reco process. Okay. Next one is the LGWR process. Very important process. Uh, so system within a system global area, the memory component called redo bu log buffer and the buffer cache are there. So using this um, server processes, uh, all the change, uh, changes are uh, written into these um, memory components and later um using the, the lgwr these uh, data are uh, reads and uh, it is written into your redo log file that is your physical files and uh, um, uh, redo transport or uh, slave processes are also running and uh, from the redo log files uh, these data are populated to these uh, process uh, okay so um, lgwr's main functionality is to read the data from the redo log buffer and it should be written into your read log files. Okay, so LGWR is a background process that writes the read log entry sequentially into our read log files and uh, using the LGWR writes uh, these things and LGWR handles the operations very fast and it must be coordinated and the delegated operate operations uh, to the log writer helper processes. So these are the uh, log writer helper processes and can be could take the benefit of concurrent operations and primarily writing to the uh, redo from the log buffer to the, um, the redo log files and posting uh, um, the complicated write to the back foreground processes that is waiting. So this is one thing. So in case of rag database, each of the instances is having its own redo log files and uh, respective LGWRs. Next one is archive process uh, that is uh, ARC and it is represented using an option over here. So n is nothing but a zero to nine, a to t, and uh, it writes um, redo entries into your archived uh, read log files, and uh, um, there will be a trigger archiving um, like redo log files. Uh, uh, changes are happen after a certain period of uh, time and once the uh, redo log files are getting pulled so this has to be written into your archive redo log files so using the archive process these uh, changes are happening in cyclic fashion so this is the thing and so using the ar log archive max processes we can define the maximum number of processes that can be um, up and running uh, during a certain period of time uh, sorry for a specific for entire uh, your database cycle type period so next one is job queue coordinated process or uh, cjq0 so basically it is a um, job queue coordinated process and uh, it selects the particular jobs spawns the process this is the job queue process uh, there is a job table okay from there it selects the particular jobs and uh, spawns the processes like the job queue slave processes and updates the job job status okay and this is my uh, job log table that is inserting the certain entries whatever the changes is happening so the main function of job queue coordinated processes uh, is to select the jobs and that needs to be run from the data dictionary and spawns the job queue slave processes um, using this parameter job queue processes, we can modify and ch change these details. And job queue slave processes executes job assigned to the job coordinator, and the jobs is picked for the 
processing in the jobs layout does the following things like uh, gather all the metadata needed for the job and they start the database session for the owner of a specific job start the transactions or anything could be related to a jobs can be managed through these processes okay next one is my recovery type to process or, or also called the RBWR, so recovery um, writer process, what it does is basically uh, it reads the data from the flashback buffer and it writes into the flash recovery area. If your database is uh, enabled for flashbacking of your entire database, then uh, using this process called the uh, RBWR recovery writer process, it uh, reads the data from the flashback buffer and it writes into the flashback logs. Okay. <clears throat> Next one is a uh, um, FBDA that is a flashback data archive process and uh, what it does is um, it re read the data before the commit and from the undo and undo segment data segments okay and write the data into the table space so this is flashback data archive process uh, it reads the data from uh, data file or undo segments and the undo blocks from the buffer cache and um, from there it uh, write the data into your flashback data archive table space next process is space management coordinator process or also called S smco and basically dynamically spawn the process and schedule the tasks such as a space management task w001 w002 w00 and WN number of processes. So space management slave process uh, pre-allocate the space into a locally managed table space and secure file segments. So Oracle in-memory slave processes and populate and repopulate in-memory enabled object. So space management coordinator is a background process that is scheduled, that schedules execution of various space management tasks. Um, so using this process, uh, these tasks are managed and uh, um, WNNN slave processes perform the uh, on behalf of the space management uh, and on behalf of Oracle memory process. Okay, so this is one more uh, process, and the last, uh, yeah, this is the, your last uh, process that a mandatory process, dispatcher process, and share server process. So, <clears throat> suppose we have a database instance and it is running in the shared server architecture so we have to uh, to be having running this um, shared server snn processes and uh, dispatcher processes so <clears throat> user request comes uh, through the listener and uh, it first connect with the dispatcher and then it connect with the the second with connect with the dispatcher so it is like uh, managing the your um, user request in a queue um, fashion and uh, there is one virtual circuit that is get created for each connection so whenever there is a uh, client and the server request uh, to the dispatcher and dispatcher receives the data into the virtual circuit and places the active circuit of the common queue to be picked up the ideal shared server processes okay and uh, snn then reads the data this process reads the data um, from the virtual circuit and perform the data work. So dispatcher is basically uh, holding up the queue and then it passes to shared servers. And, uh, and then we have after the SNL complete the client request, it releases the virtual circuit back to the DNN. So once this is done, then it will release the circuit to this one, DNNs and it frees the handle for the client. So both SSN and DNN can run as a thread or the operating system process in addition to the database instance and also run as on the shared server. So with this, our um, Oracle 19C database architecture um, tutorial is uh, finished and I hope uh, uh, you have understood so far whatever we have discussed. Uh, so this is a, um, an overview of your database architecture and uh, <clears throat> remember guys that there are various components uh, covering the entire uh, architecture within a single lecture is a impossible task but i try to 
for all of them and um, i hope you have understood everything if you want these documents you can uh, uh, bring me in the comment box i will definitely provide you the documents or i will be giving you the links where you can refer this um, in more detail more depth and uh, definitely you will be able to learn this um, architecture diagram as a oracle db you should be knowing your architectural diagram of your database and how the data flows and how um, everything works behind so understanding of oracle architecture is very important i hope you guys have understood everything if you are new to my youtube channel please subscribe oracle db online or uh, training uh, tutorial uh, dba training um uh, this youtube channels and um, if you want personal training you can learn and there are various uh, youtube videos uh, available uh, like um, different different tutorials are available on my youtube channels you can go through all of them and uh, learn um, all the all the tutorials and um, thanks you thanks guys uh, for watching this video um, have a great day bye bye thanks